Hey, Steve Mignanti here in a, a private uh, physical therapy clinic because I uh, got encephalitis back in September and haven't been able to do new videos for the Junkyard Crawl. But in the meantime, we figure something's better than nothing. And a lot of people don't realize that we've got something like 330 videos in the channel playlist for the Steve Mignanti YouTube channel. So if you're uh, having withdrawal from no new videos, you can actually check out some of the classics that you might not have seen before. And in the meantime, before we get rolling with this, we're going to run a bunch of heavy-duty truck videos in a string of maybe 10 of them. So every day you'll get a good fix of Mack trucks, Diamond T's, Rio's, Peterbilt's. Well, no Peterbilt's actually. Those are a little too big for the junkyard. But basically Ford and GMC, even Toro Flow V6 diesels, crazy stuff. So we're going to run those things uh, in the next several days. So please stay tuned to the Steve Mags YouTube channel. By all means, give us a thumbs up. And quickly, I want to thank Rick DeBrule and Tyler Hoover for keeping the channel alive in December and January and really stepping up. So thanks, guys. Well, roll the tape. Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1966 up Mac R Series truck. Now, the R Series again arrived in 66 and was built for like 40 years after that uh, with minimal changes to the basic look. Now, this is kind of an unusual one because this is a U Series with the offset cab. We'll get to that in a second. But the cool thing about the R Series Mac was that it was first Mac's first use of fiberglass in a mass production setting. And in fact, it has a tilt nose just like a 55 Chevy Gasser. We can see right here that it's one man uh, tiltage, right like that. It's nicely center-weighted or counter-weighted, I should say, and it basically floats right like that and allows great access to the engine. But before we get into that any further, this again is a U-Series version of the R model. What that means is if we look from the front of this thing, the cab is offset like two feet or more to the left hand side. What's that about? Well, that's basically about minimizing there's a thing called the bumper to back of cab dimension. From here to the back of the cab, the shorter the better for maneuverability in cities and in tight confines of a construction setting. So what Mac did, they moved the cab over and forward. The engine's still right down the middle, but by doing the offset, they allowed the driver to be closer so that bumper to back of cab measurement was as tight as it could cost possibly be. Now, the only thing is, while the cab is similar to an R series, uh, the R series has a centered cab like the picture we see right here. On the U's, the fiberglass nose is actually different, it's shorter, so it's not interchangeable with an R-series truck. But with that said, uh, again, fiberglass up front, lightweight stuff. Now in this one here, we have the classic Mac name, uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is where they were initially, and uh, nothing uh, as tough as a Mac truck, built like a Mac truck, more on that too in a second. Now these little shutters right here, open or closed. They're thermostatically controlled and these can close to help the engine to run at its peak temperature or open up on a really hot day to help the radiator do a better job of keeping the away from the engine away from something beyond its peak temperature which is called overheating. Now ancient technology but hey if it worked then it works now. A beam of buggy springs but massive springs on this monster. This is a DM600 and the DM is the ultra duty version of the U-series. Big drum brakes. You can see the the brake shoe uncovered right there between the drum, that gap right there, massive air brakes on this thing. And again, big drums all the way around on this one here. Uh, other details, we can see this thing definitely saw some cold weather use here on the driver's side. The headlight surround has this little guy right here. Looks like a, a little a fitting for electricity, but it has the Mack Bulldog. Sure enough, this is an engine block heater and it's deleted now, but you would have a cord. You'd plug it in and this would keep the block warm overnight. So it would start quicker in the morning without any issues at all. But again, the offset cab on this thing is such a strange looking creature if you're not used to it. And when I was a kid, I'd see these truck come down the road from both sides and never realized there was something weird about it. And of course, if you look here on the driver's side, it's flush. And again, the driver's right here steering from the left hand side. But if we come to the other side of the cab, we'll see it's a whole different bag of potatoes. The air cleaner's here and the cab is way in there, about two feet. Kind of a weird thing, but once again, the U-series of the R model is the offset cab. It's all about getting that bumper to back of cab as short as we possibly can. And let's take a look at the engine while we're here. 
So it's lifted up, no hydraulics, no nothing, just basically gravity does the job, take it over center, and voila, there she goes. Big old Mac six cylinder diesel right there, turbocharger right there, and again, turbochargers and diesels go together hand in hand. Boost brings on the torque, and basically lots of power right here to pull a house off its foundation. And this is uh, Owner Operator Magazine of January, February of 1976. And if you're a trucker back in the day when you were watching Moving On with Sonny Pruitt, you probably knew about Owner Operator. Great magazine. And here we have, it says on the right, two guys saying, you never hear people say, built like a Peterbilt truck. Of course not, it's always, drum roll please, built like a Mack truck. There it is right there. And there was t-shirts, it was a whole marketing campaign. And if you look at the bottom right, you can see it right there, man. Mack truck, red, white, and blue, American as heck. Of course, it's been through some changes. They still make Macs, but again, the old days of building these things in Allentown, Pennsylvania, not so much anymore. But again, the DM600, a tough truck. And here's the story right here, an owner-operator, May, June of 79, with a guy who got a million miles. This is the story of Danny... Bauer of Williamsport, Pennsylvania says in eight years, he has logged over a million miles with his 1970, it was only nine years old, R685ST, which had the 237 horsepower Maxi 9, averages just a fraction over six miles per gallon, not too shabby. And it says here, the engine, injector pump, starter, air compressor, and universals have never been out of this tractor, nor have many other components, such as the front springs, the rear end, which has all the original bearings, even the paint job is the original factory finish. And here's uh, Mr. Uh, Danny Bauer right here checking the oil, being a, a dutiful owner of his Mack R model truck. And here it is right here, running in the summer, in the winter, doing its job. It says Bauer's million mile plus Mack has a six speed Maxa torque transmission and 34,000 pound bogey. That's cool. So Mack trucks, man, tough as can be. Not pretty, not like a Peterbilt, but again, uh, not as classy, but certainly just as capable of hauling any kind of a load. And again, this one here would have been very, very comfortable in a city setting. Uh, this one was a 10-wheeler, or an 8-wheeler, I should say, with uh, a dump body on it. We know that much uh, because it was in a sand pit. And definitely with the short nose on this thing, it was much better at making its way around the sand and all that stuff uh, versus a long nose our model truck. So let's uh, trade shots here and Shane, you can jump around here and we'll look inside this thing. And here's the driver's side. And we can see right here, here's the trim tag. And on that, we can see that it is uh, a DM600. And the SX is important. S means it's a dual axle truck. Again, with uh, what, eight wheels or 10 wheels. There you go, 10 wheels, eight in the back, two in the front. And the X is heavy duty. This is uh, about as tough as it gets. And look at this stuff right here. Here are the brake shoes on the floor and side. These guys right here, and those are massive. Uh, and of course the uh, driver sits here on the left-hand side as close as possibly can be to the, uh, the side of the road where it matters when you're judging your distance and you're you know, navigating and maneuvering with uh, that dump body behind it. Let's now go to the back of the cab and see where this thing has been snubbed off. It's kind of sad, you know, death isn't always proud and this poor workhorse was sliced off right here and it's being harvested now for its engine. And here's the back of that Mack transmission. And again, Mack made their own trannies. There it is right there. Fuller, you know, Road Ranger, that kind of stuff. But this is a Mack transmission for sure right here. Look at the size of that, that output flange right there, that U-joint, massive stuff right there. Makes a Hemi Cuda look like it's uh, made out of plastic. And the muffler, of course, offset. Here it is right here. Sort of a canister style muffler coming out the side. And inside this thing, take a peek here. One of the problems, I guess, if you're a passenger, is see the engine in the U model was still in the center, but with the cab offset as far as it is to the left, the passenger has to put his feet up on the doghouse where the engine looks like it's offset, but the reality is it's kind of playing with your head. The cab is what's pushed over. The engine's right down the middle of the frame, no big deal, but look at that engine right there, sort of right in your way if you're sitting there as a passenger. But again, most trucks were not born to be uh, you know, passenger vehicles, but look how the shifters even come out of the floor, almost in the area of the passenger seat. They're offset to the uh, driver's side. Interesting stuff. So so again, if you see a Mack truck coming down the street and something looks a little weird about it, it's probably a U model or the DM version, which is the heavy duty of the U model. So the offset cab, very different from something as pedestrian lightweight as this GMC with the centered cab. But it all played into the idea of keeping the bumper to back of cab distance as short as possibly could be. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steam Mag's YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and hit the bell so you know when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow morning.